الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه الطاهرين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Today I would like to talk to you regarding an important subject How to understand Quran At the outset I would like to mention about two persons whom I met in Kuwait One is John Esposito He is professor of Islamic studies in Georgetown University even today. Even today if you go and search his name with Georgetown University you will find his name. He is an eminent scholar of Islam and he has a great understanding of Quran and he is known as an authority in America about Islam. And the second person whom I met is a Finnish Islamic scholar who is who translated Quran into Finnish language and who is again a very eminent personality and Islamic scholar of Finland. But one thing common among these two personalities that is both of them are not Muslims. This is really an interesting phenomenon. They have studied Quran, they have understood Quran and they have an above average knowledge about Quran and they have knowledge of Arabic and Quran more than an average Muslims. But unfortunately, they are not Muslims. They have not embraced Islam or they have not accepted the faith. There is a beautiful Urdu couplet which says, Ilm ke maqsas se jo ghafil rahe, ilm hasil kar ke bhi jahil rahe. In the sense, one who fails to understand the objective of education will be and illiterate even after or remain uneducated even after attaining education and this is what is the fate of these two personalities. This again makes us clear that in order to understand Quran we should have some of the requisites and primary qualities. Without these primary qualities it is difficult to understand Quran. What are these primary qualities? Quran says in the beginning itself ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا this is a book and there is no doubt about it. And it is the guidance to the people who are pious, who are God-fearing or God-conscious. For muttaqeen, the better word is God-conscious people. So here Quran clarifies that this Quran will be a book of guidance for those who are God-conscious, who would like to attain guidance from Quran Karim. This is the basic requisites. Otherwise, if you just would like to acquire knowledge of Quran, just like so many Islamic scholars who are not Muslims in the world, you can acquire knowledge about Quran, knowledge about so many Islamic aspects. And it is of course a great knowledge, but it will not give you ultimate purpose of the revelation of the Quran, which is hidayah or guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why what is necessary for acquiring guidance from Quran is you have to attain God consciousness. And if, uh, if you attain God consciousness, what will be your situation? Allah wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ عَيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The situation or the status of the believer is like when Allah is mentioned to them, they feel tremor in their hearts. And when the verses of Allah is recited to them, they feel an increase in their faith. And they believe in Allah alone. And this will be the situation of the believers. That every time when Allah is mentioned to them, they feel a tremor in their hearts. Their heart trembles. And every time when the verses of Quran is recited to them, they feel that their faith is increased. This should be our situation. This should be the status of our faith. Then only we can be a believer. One more important thing regarding the study of the Quran is that it is the responsibility of the every individual person who would like to study a Quran to reflect on the verses of Quran. Every individuals who are sitting here, in thousands of people sitting in front of me, they, every one of sh them should try to understand Quran. Everyone should personally reflect Quran. This is their obligation. And there may be difference of opinion about that. 
Some people say that if every individual try to understand Quran, he may go astray. He may misunderstand the responsibility. The responsibility because every individual is not a scholar. That's why if he try to understand Quran himself, there is certain possibility that he may go astray and he may misunderstand. But again, there is a solution for it. There are so many scholars living in our society. There are so many books written about Quran and he can verify it, he can compare it, he can verify the scholars, he can consult with the scholars and he can clear the understanding. He can confirm that his understanding of Quran, his personal understanding of Quran is correct or wrong. He can verify that. But if anyone is not trying to understand Quran by himself, the loss which he faces by not trying to understand Quran cannot be undermined and it cannot be it cannot he cannot overcome the loss by trying not to understand Quran that's why it is necessary that every individual should try to understand Quran again what we have to understand about this book is about this book Quran Karim says inna anzalnahu Quranan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun we have revealed this Quran as an Arabic Quran so that you may learn wisdom. This is an important verse for us to understand. Quran is revealed in Arabic language. Why it is revealed in Arabic language? All the books sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not revealed in Arabic language. But one thing common in the selection of the languages when Allah wa ta'ala sent down any books to any of the prophets. The common logic here is every time it books is sent to in the language of the first addresses. The language of first addresses of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam was Hebrew. That's why you can see that the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to Musa alayhi salam is in Hebrew language. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam. His first addresses were speaking Aramaic language. Even today in Syria, in a place called Ma'lula, I had a chance to personally go and witness people speaking this language, Muslims and Christians. They speak these languages, language of Jesus Christ. And that language is Aramaic language. So Sayyidina Isa was speaking in Aramaic language. Like that, every prophet, they used to, their revelations came in the language of their first addresses. The language of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Arabic. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this revelation in Arabic language. But is it only for Arabs? Definitely not. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he confirmed that he is not going to live for more years, he said in the last sermon, which is called Hajjatul Wida, Khutbatul Hajjatul Wida, the, the sermon of the last last hajj, last farewell hajj. In that particular hajj, he said that, please, Isma'u qawli fa inni la adri la alqaakum ba'da aami hadha bihadha al-mawqifi abada. Listen to me carefully. I may not be able to speak to you in this place again next time. That means, he clarified to the people that probably this is a last occasion where I am speaking to a, grand, a large number of people. In that particular speech, he has given very, very important aspects for which we have to care about. One of the important things he mentioned at the end of his sermon is, Those who are present here, around 125,000 people were there in front of him. That was the largest Islamic congregation in the presence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that was the farewell hajj and the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad. He said, those who are present here, فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدِ الْغَائِبِ Those who are present here, it is their responsibility to convey this message to those who are not present here. Which means he conveyed to thousands of people that it is your responsibility, O oh people in front of me, to convey this message to the people who are not in front of me. That's why people started conveying the message. And today you will see everywhere there are Muslims. And when the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to some places, they not only acquired this faith, they acquired the language as well. For example, African countries, language of Egypt today is Arabic. People there, Muslims, Christians, Jews or any others, 
they all speak Arabic language. Their mother tongue is Arabic. And how they became people who speak Arabic language, how is the Arabic became dominant language in Egypt, this is because of Islam. When Prophet Muhammad sent his companion to convey the message of Islam, their language was heliography. And even today, this language is there in Egypt. Anyone go for tourism will definitely encounter this language. They will write this language in the banyans and in mementos and give it to you. So this language was there and even today this language is there as a history. But the language became Arabic just to understand faith. So like that you will, uh, people acquired faith and people acquired language. That's how the pe language of the people became Arabic. Today if you see the scenario of Muslims around the globe, 80% of them are non-Arabs and 20% of them are Arabs. So it is necessary for the 80% of Muslims who are not Arabs to try to understand Quran through Arabic language. And it is 80% of the Muslims today, in spite of not knowing Arabic very much and not being Arabs, they also understand Quran, they also understand Islamic practices. How it is possible? Because the first addressees who are Arabs, they conveyed this message to them. That's why Allah Taala says, Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiyan la'allakum ta'aqiloon. We have revealed this Qur'an in the language of Arabic and we have made this Qur'an a Qur'an of Arabic language so that you may understand it, so, may, so that you may learn wisdom from it. And that was very important and that is very purpose of sending Qur'an in Arabic language. And in Quran, there are so many places it is mentioned that we have to try to reflect on the verses of Quran. For example, in one place, Quran says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatazakkara ulul alba. We have revealed this blessed book upon you so that you may reflect on these verses and so that wise people amongst you may understand. So it, this verse clearly states that these verses are revealed to you which are blessed verses so that you may reflect on it, so that you may think over it, so, may you, so that you may ponder over it and so that the intelligent people and people of understanding amongst you may reflect over it. This is the purpose of sending down this book which, is the, which has the verses which are very precious verses. And again in another place, Qur'an says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Why you are not reflecting upon Qur'an? Is there locks upon your hearts? So here again Allah Taala questions, Is there locks upon your hearts? Why you are not pondering over Qur'an? Why you are not reflecting over Qur'an? Reflecting over Qur'an, trying to understand Qur'an, it is our responsibility. If you are not doing it, it is not something you are doing justice with the Qur'an. So it is our responsibility. Again Allah Taala emphasizes and says that what is the qualities of the believers? Believers, they have so many qualities. In Qur'an, Allah Taala mentions about the qualities of the believers and says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا سُمَّمْ وَعْمِيَانَ When the verses of Allah Subhanahu Taala is recited to them, they will not fall upon them deaf and blind. This verse is clear, clarifies us that the verses of Allah subhanahu ta'ala is recited in front of you. You should not fall deaf in front of it and you should not fall you should not fall blind when the verses of you should not act as if you are blind and you should not act as if you are deaf when the verses of Allah subhanahu ta'ala is recited to you. It is our responsibility to reflect over Quran. And if you are not reflecting over Quran, then what will happen? Again, Quran mentions about some people who are not trying to understand Quran. About them, Allah Taala mentions, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ عَيُّنٌ لا 